One of the most fundamental concepts that you need to learn at the beginning of the semester is how to name variables. I mean, it might seem to be pretty simple, but to be honest, there's a little bit more complexity to it than you might think. I want to make sure that if you receive an error, for example, you can easily fix it. But certainly one way to avoid getting errors at the very beginning of the semester is to name your variables correctly. So let's go through this carefully to make sure that you reduce the number of errors in your code. As a programmer, one of the things you'll learn is one of the most important things you can understand is to avoid errors before they happen. And so to do that, we're going to talk a little bit about variable types and names. Misrepresenting or using an inappropriate syntax for a variable is a recipe for disaster because it's an extremely difficult error to detect. So we're going to go through the rules for variable names and, and as well as types, and hopefully that'll understand, you'll understand so that you won't make that error when you're doing your first programs. So here's an example of four different variable types, and these are the ones that we're going to be using for the most this semester. The first one is a float. A float is simply a number that has some kind of a decimal value. So in the first example, you'll see pi. Pi is 3.14. And the hashtag, by the way, is a comment. So anything after that hashtag is ignored by Python. So we can make a comment in there to indicate and explain what we're doing. So here I'm just saying that pi is a float because of the decimal. In the second example, speed limit, 45.0, although that simplifies, I mean, we know that mathematically simplifies to 45. To Python, if we put the 0, .0 at the end, that will make a speed limit a float as well. So this is one way to actually create different types, including a float in this situation. In the second example, we're dealing with integers. Integers are whole numbers, and these are commonly used, of course. And so in the first example here, we have age. Uh, because we're setting age to 12 and not 12.0, Python will consider age to be an integer or a whole number. In the second example, temp in Celsius, uh, the, the value is negative 43, and negative values can also be used as integers, of course. So in this case, again, temp in Celsius is considered to be uh, an integer. Strings. Strings are alphanumeric or, another way of thinking about it, is a letter or number type. You can mix both letters and numbers with strings. So a street number, for example, if four, uh, since we're putting quotes around the four, four is not considered to be an integer. It is considered to be a string. So therefore, street number will have a type of string. Uh, in the second example, the attorney, John Q. Public, you'll notice here I used double quotes, not single quotes, and that's okay. Python will accept either one uh, if you wanted to denote a variable to be a string. So attorney will also be a string variable uh, with the double quotes. By the way, the, if I had done that in street number and put double quotes around the four, it also works fine. The only thing you need to be sure is that whatever you start with, you need to end with. Uh, make sure you don't use a single quote and then a double quote at the end. You have to make sure that you pair them up correctly. The last example we won't use quite as much, but it does commonly come up, and that is a Boolean. The interesting thing about Booleans is they can only take on two values, true and false. Now, the first letter of true must be capitalized, and the first letter of false must be capitalized if you decide to specifically assign that value. But you can also use some kind of a conditional statement. So in the first example, I say is equal, and you'll notice there are two different equal sign forms here. In the first example, there's a single equal sign. In the second example, there's a double equal sign. Python uh, uses those completely differently. A single equal sign has to do with assignment. And that is what does is equal, what value does is equal get? Uh, on the right side of that single equal sign, we have an, a conditional expression. Pi equal equal 3.14. The two equal signs is equivalent to is it the same value? So in other words, it's going to look at the value of pi, the variable pi, which of course up above we defined as 3.14. And is that the same as the value that is on the right side of the double equal sign, which is, of course, again, 3.14. Since the variable pi has a value of 3.14, and we're checking whether the variable pi has the value of 3.14, that is, of course, true. So therefore, is equal will receive or is assigned the value of true. I know that this is a little bit confusing. We won't use this uh, format a lot, but at the same time, it is a really interesting 
uh, way of doing things with Booleans in Python. In the second example, we can use the expression can drink alcohol. And again, can drink alcohol will be assigned the value of true or false depending on what is the, on the right side of the single equal sign. In this situation, we're checking whether or not the age is greater than 21, of course, which is the uh, drinking age in Delaware. Uh, since we assigned the drinking age up, or <laughs> assigned the age rather to be 12 up above, in this situation, 12, of course, is not greater than 21. So the, in this situation, can drink alcohol will get the value of false. So these are the four types that we will be using this semester. Floats, integers, strings, and booleans. So how does Python know a variable's type? Um, this is very important. And Python uses a specific approach, which is called duct typing. And basically what it says is whatever you assign it, that's its type. So if we say, for example, has been paid equals false, Python will automatically make that a Boolean. If we say hourly wage equals 15.66, since there is a decimal, Python will assign the type of a float. If the hours worked is 40, and that's a whole number, Python will assign the value of integer. And of course, if uh, the employee name, if there's double or single quotes on the right side of the equal sign, that will take a value of a string. So that's how Python knows the variable's type. Some languages, by the way, you have to explicitly declare a variable's type. With Python, you do not. Now, there are situations where you have to convert types. Um, and so, for example, commonly between floats and ints or ints and floats. In the first example here, we have hourly wage gets a value of 15. Since there is no decimal, hourly wage is an integer. In, in the second line of code here, though, we want wage to be actually a floating point or decimal type. So we can explicitly convert it from an integer or a whole number type to a float or a decimal type. When you printed wage here, it would actually print 15.0, not 15. Uh, the 15.0, again, Python is communicating to you that I'm uh, considering this to be a float, not an integer. In, in the next example, if we assigned hourly wage to, explicitly to a floating point value, 15.55, we could still convert it to an integer. And now wage has a value of an int. Uh, in this case, it would round, it would not round actually 15.55, it'll actually truncate. And so in the end, what will happen is print when it prints, fifth, uh, it will not print 16, it will actually print the value of 15. Uh, again, when you use the int function, it only takes the integer portion of the number, not the decimal part. So some things about variable names in Python. First of all, uh, there are some do's and don'ts. And it's very important that you understand um, the rules regarding variable names. So first of all, use meaningful names. Uh, the first name, for example, if you're, if you're using first name, first underscore name is much, much preferred over just a simple letter value called x. As your code gets more complicated, you'll learn that using simple uh, names like x might save you a little typing, but your code starts becoming much, much more difficult to understand. Um, don't use single letter names. Avoid things like X and Y and Z and Q and R. Instead, use words that make sense. Uh, also, never use Python reserved words. Now, I know at the beginning of the semester, you probably don't know what the reserved words are in Python. But at the same time, use words that describe what the variable means. Don't use things like integer for a particular variable or float. Those are bad names because Python considers them in a special way, and it could cause errors in your code. In the next example, with underscores, you want to use underscores a lot in Python. There is a word called Pythonic in Python. And what it means is it's consistent with the spirit of how Python was meant to be used. Underscores are very important in Python variable names, and they are used to basically replace spaces. So I've given you a couple of examples here. Do not use spaces in variable names. As a matter of fact, if you use a space, it will explicitly generate an error. Uh, you cannot use, for example, total space score as the name of a variable. Python will not consider that to be a single variable, and you will get an error. Python loves lowercase letters. Again, this is very Pythonic to use lowercase letters for variable names. 
do not use capital letters in your variable names. I know that seems very silly, but if you go to an organization and you actually do some coding for them, they will enforce this rule. This is very widely used, and so you do not want to use capital letters. Uh, the variable name, for example, weekly pay here in the right example, uh, the weekly pay is not considered to be Pythonic. Weekly underscore pay is considered to be appropriate. Next, only use letters for variable names. Now, I want to be clear about this. Technically, you can use numbers as long as they aren't the first letter of the variable name, but I personally avoid it. I like to I just use like to use letters in my variable names because I think it's more descriptive and it's less confusing. Don't ever use special characters other than the underscore in your variable names. So for example, hashtags, ampersands, carrots, uh, things like that are really or asterisks. Those have a specific meaning within Python, and if you use them within your variable names, it will likely result in an error. Now, Python naming conventions. Now, I just showed you things that will throw errors or that things will Python will reject as variable names. But Python also, and most programming languages, by the way, have what are called naming conventions. And this is an accepted standard for how variables and other structures should be used. Now, right now, we're focused on variables. Um, first of all, as I mentioned earlier, variables should always be lowercase. Do not use uppercase letters in your variable names. If a variable consists of multiple words, the words should be separated by underscores. Um, again, a convention is a standard. It's not one that the language enforces. So you can technically use uppercase letters in Python. It's just that it violates the, the naming convention that has evolved around Python. It's also important to know that variable names are actually case sensitive. So if you use first name, for example, with a capital letter with F, that Python con considers that to be a completely different variable than first name with a lowercase f. Python will not equate the two in any way. Technically, you can Python allows you to use a quite a variety of uppercase and lowercase letters, but generally speaking, you should not do that. Generally speaking, you should keep lowercase letters always for your variable names. Now, this environment should look familiar to you because this is where we uh, left off in a previous video. To create a new file, let's go to File, New, Notebook. And again, we're going to use the Python 3 kernel. And let's give it a name. So we're going to right click and say rename. And today is June 30th. So I'm going to say 630. And we'll say variable names. OK. You'll notice that it does rename it over here on this tab as well. And I can hit Save. And you'll notice then this file is saved. So let's do an example. Let's pull in some examples that I used in my previous in, in the earlier part of the video. I could say, for example, pi equals 3.14. And I can hit Shift and then Enter, and that will run that. Now what that does is, is it, it actually stores in memory the value of pi inside of Python. If I type the word pi, whoops, and then hit Shift, Enter, it will tell me it's 3.14. If you're printing just one thing in a window, you can just type the name of the variable. It's equivalent to doing this. It, should, it will give you the same value. What you can't do, though, is print multiple things in a window just by using the variable name. So if I said, for example, x equals 3, and then run it, okay? If I do this, and then pi, it will only print the last value. If I want to print both values, I have to explicitly use the print statement to print both values. Now again, as I mentioned in the earlier video, you should not use variables like x, but I was just using this as a specific example to illustrate a point. If I want to check and see what value, what, the, what pi's type is, I can explicitly ask Python to tell me. I can say pi and hit shift enter, and it will tell me it's a float. float. I can say type x and hit shift enter, and it will tell me that it's an int. So again, Python has assigned a type to the variable based on the value that I gave it. In the first example, since pi was 3.14 and that had a decimal value, Python will give it a value of a float, of the type of a float. But since x got a whole number value, it will assign it the value of an int. In the case of strings, if I said street number, for example, I could say street number equals 4. 
And again, as long as I use, I can use single or double quotes, as long as they're paired correctly, I run that, that stores the variable street number in memory. And if I say now street number, and then I hit, uh, it will tell me that it's that it is a, notice the quotes around the four. Python is explicitly telling me that it considers it to be a string. I can verify that again by saying, what is street numbers type? And it'll come back and tell me it is an str or a string. Similarly, I can say, for example, with Booleans, I can say is equal. I'm going to use the single equal value. And then I'm going to say, is that equal to pi? That is, is pi equal to 3.14? Now, one way to think about it, maybe it might be easier to understand, is to do it like this. Put parentheses around that. Python will first evaluate this condition, and it will say, is pi truly equal to the value of 3.14? And it turns out, of course, it is. So therefore, this will return a value of true, and therefore, the value of true will be assigned to is equal. If I run this and then say is equal, it comes back and tells me that it's true. And then finally, can drink alcohol equals and is age greater than 21. Again, maybe if we add the parentheses around here, it's a little easier to understand. Python will first evaluate the expression inside the parentheses. Since age has a value, actually it turns out age did not have a value. So let's go ahead and assign that because otherwise I will get a bit an error. I can say age equals 12 in the same cell. Since age has a value of 12, 12 is of course not greater than 21. Can drink alcohol will get the value of false. So if I run this now and then I can say can drink alcohol and run that, it will come back as a value of false.